ATP just isn't a show. Everything comes from personal experiences. I am the sister that consoles my gay brother every day after school. She was drinking a lot. I skipped meals to lose weight. He didn't mean to hit me. He said he was sorry and that it would never happen again. And that's the only reason my life wasn't made a living hell. The shade of my skin. I am so gay. And you know what? I love being gay. I am who I am, and I'm proud. ATP is a program out of the Campus Climate Office where we select about 20 students who I call change agents who work towards promoting greater awareness around issues of social justice, diversity, and any climate issues we're seeing on our campus. They use the stage as their platform and they work towards inspiring critical thought and sparking a campus-wide conversation. ATP really emerged from a realization that true learning and true growth happens when we step outside of our comfort zones and we really engage with people who are different from ourselves. And for some people, it's a window into another life experience that they've never, uh, they've never understood or had to understand. Um, and so we can learn from other perspectives. And some stories also serve as a mirror that validates people's experiences, people in the audience who can say, oh my gosh, I'm not alone, or there's somebody else who's going through this too. But when that window can become a mirror, and once in a while you can look into a window and see yourself reflected. One of my other cast members shared a story about how they're concerned about after college and if they will be able to sustain their own life and not take their own life. This is something that's been plaguing me forever. I feel like every day I wake up is a plus one that I shouldn't have had. I lost friends at war and I frankly think it should have been me, kind of a bittersweet gift. But to hear someone else talk about how their life just seems to be down and up, down and up, and it just seems over the last couple of years that the downs just keep getting further down. The fear that someday you would do the worst thing, taking your own life and leaving everyone behind, that really hit home to me because it's been a very long road. And I think that having this ATP family will really help build the bonds to prevent many people from doing that, including some of ourselves. I'm in a skit and it's called Breathe Me. And the main point is addiction. My father died of alcoholism as well as other issues. And when we go out there at the end and I place the candle down, I just feel that that message if it could stop one person from dying of addiction and leaving a son and a family behind, that would mean the world to me. For our students in ATP, I think one of the big learning outcomes uh, that they walk away with is this understanding that they may never put any of those struggles behind them fully. And, and that's not really the goal. The goal is to be able to understand your struggle, to be able to understand what it means for you, what it means for those around you, to understand how your challenges in life and your struggles relate to what your peers are facing and have faced, uh, to share what you've learned through your struggle with other people. I feel like as society, we try to like bridge the gap between differences. And yes, now we can, you know, all sit at like a diner together, but at the end of the day, there are some things that minorities just won't benefit from because they are a minority. Whether we want to admit it or not, whether we, you know, make laws and rules to say that like everyone is equal, it's not. Story of your life, don't you have affirmative action on your side? Are you serious? Yeah, don't companies have to meet a minority quota or something? It should be easy for you to get a job. Easy, first of all, racial quotas aren't even real. In fact, they're illegal. And secondly, affirmative action was made to promote equal opportunity for all peoples, but that doesn't solve all of our issues. Do you find it tough to find a job in a failing economy, that even when the economy is strong, people of color still struggle to find a decent job? Some people can pass as a heterosexual. Some people can pass as not being disabled because like people, they, like some things are just invisible to people. Like if you was to look at me right now, you wouldn't know if I was, if I was heterosexual or homosexual. You wouldn't, know if I, you wouldn't know if I had disability, but you know that I'm black. 
And that's something that I just can't hide. And that's something that I have to deal with every day, knowing that people see my color. And people have a problem with that for some reason, even though we've come up so much in society. Whether you want to admit or not, this color plays a huge role in my life. With ATP, I'm surrounded by people who accept my differences. I'm not just the black girl. I know that there are people in the audience that are challenged by some of our messages that don't agree with the messages. And, and that isn't the point. The point isn't to agree with everything. These are people's stories. I don't think that they're debatable, um, but certainly there are messages that come along with that, that, um, that people agree with or don't agree with. And, and what we want to do is to have people thinking and to create a conversation. The sexual assault that happened to me happened in the very first season that I was in ATP. And it took me, gosh, what, two years? Um, four seasons to share my story. It's been 479 days since the trial. 7,890 Five hours since he raped me. I would have hoped I could have come so much farther than I am today, but here I stand. After the show, I had girls I didn't even know come up and give me the biggest hugs I've ever gotten. And I've had several people come up to me bawling their eyes out with no explanation. They just hug me tight and and you know, you know, when somebody gives you that look, you just, it's, you know. He used my body for his own selfish satisfaction. And I was left broken, cracked, unrepairable, never to trust again. We usually go to about probably one high school a semester to do a performance and we were at a smaller high school. I distinctly remember after the show, I had three girls come up to me and they hugged me. They said, thank you so much for saying that. They're like, that affected me and they're in high school. And they, we had the knowing look that I talked about earlier and it broke my heart. We are here to educate students. That's the mission of the university. Uh, and as I see it, uh, that education, uh, it amounts to more than just uh, spoon-feeding facts and figures. Uh, it means personal growth. It means personal transformation. Certainly, I've seen a change in the way people are able to have conversations and in the identities that people are willing to embrace because it's just, it's just a safer place and people are being being more accepting. We certainly have a long way to go, but I'm definitely seeing it in the classrooms, in on this campus, in trainings that I do. We've definitely come a long way.